Hello and welcome to this tutorial and today we're going to be talking about the Race Studio 3 analysis software. Now this tutorial makes up a series of uh, tutorials which are really focusing on the fact that the software went in production a couple of weeks ago and we're really digging into some of the core features and functions of the new analysis software itself. This video in particular, we're going to start looking at the track report feature and really starting to understand a little bit more about the track, the track layout, and understanding some of the segments that we've created. So let's get into Race Studio 3, which we have here, and start having a look at some of the data. Now, this is the profile we created earlier on. This was the AIM GPS data analysis, which you can see up here. And right now, I'm just going to close that one down, um, is that we've really focused our conversation on time and distance uh, as part of that conversation. We also looked in a previous video about being able to create custom segments. We use Brands Hatch as the example, but we're back at Silverstone now with these segments that have been created for each of the key corners and straights um, as part of the Silverstone National Track. Now, it's important that we remember these because by segmenting the track and creating it as to how we want, it will enable a lot more of the functionality in some of the aspects of uh, the software, like the track report feature. So let's have a look at that in more detail. So what we're going to do is we're going to add to this user profile and not only look at time and distance, what we're going to do is we're going to add in um, the track layout view. It's just this button here. And if I click on that, you're going to see a much bigger view of the um, track map that right now is a nice little sort of uh, example down here that allows you to be able to see where you are on track and have a little overview here. You can zoom in and out if you need to, but you want a bigger view. So it's going to click on that track and it's going to allow us to see a lot of information that is here. As part of this new software, you're also going to be able to see some information about each of the corners associated, or each of the segments, I should say, associated with that track. And this is where when you segmented the track, you created those segments. I can also resize, and so I'm just going to scroll this one over a little bit to be able to zoom in and out and have a look. But before we get into looking at a bit of analysis, let's just have a quick run through of what we're looking at here. You can either use your mouse or you can zoom in and out using these buttons that are here. You can use this to center uh, the map and you can use this to be able to sort of colorize um, one color or you can color scale. And we'll look at that potentially in a little bit more detail a bit later on. So it's a nice and easy way of looking through it. But the most important one to have a look at here is whether you want to be able to change the map software or the mapping provider, depending on why. And so some people might do this out of user preference. Um, I might like Bing instead of using Google Maps, so I could just change that. And now I've got the view of what Bing had seen when they did their aerial view or wherever they gather the data um, for the mapping of Bing. Similarly, I can do it with Here Maps. I can do it with um, uh, Thunder Forest. I can do it with all sorts of different views that give me uh, a different understanding of the track itself. I'm just going to put it back to Google for the time being. Now, one of the other reasons you might like to do this is if you scroll in a little bit, some things get easier or harder to be able to view depending on the mapping software you, you've used. Sometimes there may be a slight discrepancy between the line and the mapping software, and that may be inconsistent with one mapping software, but better with another. So if I was zoomed in here and I was looking at the line on Google Earth, that looks pretty accurate actually, but if I wanted to be able to have a look at it on Bing, I can see what their view was as well. One of the other key aspects of being able to switch is when we get into clarity. So as I've zoomed in here, you can see that Bing's got a bit sort of sort of fuzzy in terms of, of, of resolution. So I can switch it back to one of the providers that gives me the resolution that helps me really be able to understand where I was on track. So there's a lot of reasons for being able to do that. And then finally, you have the option up here is that you can always go back to the original sort of view, which is just looking at the map as if it were just a GPS rendering itself. Um, one thing to note is that you have to be connected to the internet to be able to make the mapping software work. I know I need to, you know, uh, that may not necessarily seem, um, or may seem a bit obvious, but uh, even if you've got Google Earth downloaded on your machine, typically this works if you're connected to the internet. So if you're at the track, connecting to your phone, connecting to the track Wi-Fi might make this uh, functional. Otherwise, you might not get this functionality to show back uh, on your network. Now, the other things that you're also going to be able to start looking at on this is to start getting into a little bit more track analysis as to what you were doing in each of those corners. Anywhere I hover over here will show me how I did through the segment. And so that's the Wellington Strait. But if I scroll out and I want to be able to see Cops Corner, for example, and I click on Cops Corner, notice how it zooms in. It shows me all the lines here. It shows me the highlighted line. 
but it also gives me the opportunity of being able to zoom into some additional information there. Now, one of the things that I like to be able to see in certain corners is I like to be able to see what the G-forces were, and I also like to be able to see what the mid corner or the, the, the minimum corner speed would be if I were looking at this segment, for example. So if I wanted to take Cop's Corner here, I might be in a position where I can then say, okay, well, I've got all this information for line, but what if I went in and I clicked on this plus button? I typed in here, let's say speed. So it allows me to see GPS speed. And I want to be able to see what the minimum speed was through that particular sort of section. If I click there, it's now going to show me what the minimum speed was through that particular corner. And I can see that the best lap was 93.2, but one of the slowest points was 88.8. .8, and I can look for consistency through that corner and get a good understanding of how I'm doing. Then I can also look at G-force. How much you know, G-force did I sort of um, uh, generate? And so that would be latitude and acceleration, latitude and all left, right. Um, and uh, longitudinal sort of like forwards, backwards. And so uh, we want latitudinal for G-forces going left and right, see how much Gs we pulled in the corner, so to speak. And I can click on that one and I can say minimum, maximum. And that just shows me that uh, depending on the speed through the corner, interestingly, um, the fastest of the lap times didn't necessarily pull enough G-force. Maybe the chassis was set a little bit. Maybe it was a better line. And so that's where we may be able to get in and having a look at how good was the line coming that through that corner and zoom in. So the track report feature gives you so much opportunity to be able to get into a little bit more detail. So not only can you see your line overlaid on the map, but you can also see this additional information. And this is, as I said, this information that I'm looking at is coming from an AIM Solo 2. We haven't even got into, you know, how useful this would be if we added in additional components, um, such as uh, steering position, if we wanted to be able to have a look at that, which we've got um, for more advanced setups. Um, and then look at G-Force and look at line and all those sort of aspects. So there's a lot of things you can do here to be able to work through it. Similarly, you can do this with all the segments. And then there's a few other things you want to be able to have a look at here. You can change the side item to be able to manage what you see. You can uh, get it so that you can see your um, uh, sort of uh, additional average minimum maximum through each of the laps. And then you can also colorize that particular area here too to be able to help you understand and navigate that with some conditional formatting as well. So it's a really great way of being able to use those segments you created to be able to analyze that data quickly on the map if you wanted to be able to work on a specific focus. And this is where we get into the analysis part and I'm not gonna get into it in too much detail, but if you're somebody like me, you typically break the track down into segments and then you analyze the segment area that you're looking at to be able to work on certain areas, which is you know, rolling more speed through the corner. Well, if we're gonna be rolling speed through the corner, this analysis might be really interesting to be able to see how's that doing in terms of consistency? How am I doing in relation to you know, um, line? And be able to piece that all together and using just the simple GPS data uh, that is available. This is before we've even potentially added in video from a smarty cap. So there's so many variations of this. I'm gonna end the uh, tutorial at this point because I wanna be able to take this forward and look at some other areas using that segmented data, but having the track map, I would argue, is one of the key tabs that you want to have on every single one of your user profiles. I will finish off this tutorial, though, just by getting into the habit and the discipline of going up here to the little gear icon here and clicking Save Profile. What that's doing is it's constantly updating the profile now so I get the time distance and I get the track. Now, one of the things you may have noticed is if I go back to time distance, it's actually zoomed in on the segment so I can see how I did in that corner. I can click up here on laps and see how I did in each of the laps and be able to zoom back into that corner by double clicking on it. But if I ever want to go back and reset, all I need to do is click on the zoom reset and it takes me back to the view overall. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, please give a thumbs up, uh, subscribe because there's going to be loads of these coming up. And uh, all that leaves me to do is say thanks so much for watching this video.